So this is a uh, video of us replacing the or resealing the keel on an Adele 820. It's a 1986 AF cockpit. So the first thing that we did was we built a crane and uh, or a, a hoist. So we've taken six by sixes up here down to the base. Uh, another one back here down with the base. We've come over here. There was already six by sixes here. We just uh, reinforced the framework at the top. We've laminated three two by tens with PL Premium uh, for each of the beams and then laminated, uh, let me see if I can zoom in on it, we've laminated uh, oak boards on the corners again with PL Premium and using an air nailer with uh, Ardoc nails, uh, three and a half inch Ardocs to uh, the, the moose antlers or an added touch. So, and then what we've done is we've got three uh, two ton chain hoists or chain falls. So this one over here is only a one and a half. Um, but in reality we're only lifting around 3,500 pounds here. Not really a great spot for the dog to lay. Mikey, move, go. So um, then we've got uh, three inch straps and what we wanted to do was use, um, we wanted to use uh, toe straps, but you need the exact length, or we did anyway, because you know our crane's only 14 feet up and with the balance that would be left over from the chain fall, we wouldn't have enough chain fall to lift the boat, so the strap actually needs to be adjustable. So we've taken a, a risk and, um, you know, we lifted everything very slowly and cautiously uh, with these straps and nothing seemed to move or give and it's been hanging here for a couple of weeks with the keel under it. We, we lifted it with the keel originally and uh, so anyway, that's that. We went in, unbolted the keel, which three of my bolts came off with my fingers. I didn't even need a wrench to take them off. And uh, we've used this strap here just to keep the straps in from sliding out. We found that they were sliding out slightly and they would stop, but uh, we just didn't want them to go any further. And then underneath here, uh, I cleaned it. What, what we did is we jacked the boat up and put two by sixes under each side to support it and then got underneath there and sanded and cleaned the base up as best as possible ground up you know uh, enough that when when we seal it we can refair it back down so uh, what we did is we pulled out the trailer we brought the trailer over here into this door and uh, sandblasted the top of the keel here. So that's what I've just finished doing, sandblasting the whole top of the keel, uh, ground down all the edge, and then we're about to sandblast this piece, the, you know, the, uh, the, the lower edge. We're going to prime that and set it back down on the boat. Now another thing we've done is we've ground a groove all the way around and that actually creates, uh, it's a very, very small uh, depression, but it creates a gasket once we reseal, put all of our Sikaflex on here. Um, it, it'll create a little gasket around there. So, uh, like we got our sandblaster, it's just for small stuff, but it seems to work well for just doing the top. And our paint is the petite, uh, it's actually called Rust Lock, but uh, they've just changed the brand. It's the, it's the metal prep and um, it just seems to work. For the research I've done, it it was like the POR15 or the uh, the petite metal prep, and so we'll we'll just paint the upper surface and then down about an inch, reset the keel, grind the rest of the uh, the keel clean, and uh, and then paint the whole keel with the with the metal prep. So the crane's actually strong enough that we can lift the whole keel clean underneath the keel. Uh, you know, metal prep under the keel, everything, and then use the Interlux 2000 to, to seal everything, uh, you know, and keep it all away from the, from the water elements.